Und was ist mit J-Lo? Die kenne ich nicht. Beauty, Charisma and Connections can allow one to get away with a lot, especially in the entertainment industry. And Jennifer Lopez is no exception to that recipe. With a music career expanding now over two decades, Jennifer is recognized as one of the biggest Latin artists of her time. Giving us timeless hits since the late 90s, J-Lo is no stranger to the music scene and all of its dirty little secrets. Jennifer herself keeping an unspoken secret that would later be discovered and used as fuel to ignite a subtle rivalry between her and Maria Carey. Over the course of her decades-long career, J-Lo has brought us timeless bops such as I'm Real, and Jenny from the Block, but has left out an important keynote that it isn't Jennifer's vocals you're hearing on the actual tracks. <laughs> After getting her big break on the sketch comedy show In Living Color, as a dancer in 1990, she went on to dance for numerous artists and was even set to tour with Janet Jackson in 1993 before taking her acting career seriously. She went on to star in low-budget films and TV shows before auditioning for the role that we would later find out would be the death and birth of a cultural icon. Jennifer went on to audition for the biographical film Selena in 1996, where she would eventually be cast as the leading role playing the late Tejano singer Selena Quintanilla. This would ultimately skyrocket Jennifer to fame. In the film, Jennifer was coached to lip sync to all of Selena's vocal performances, with the exception of the beginning of Como La Flor. This wouldn't be the last time she would be encouraged to do so. In June of 1999, Jennifer would find herself at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 with her single If You Had My Love from her debut Latin pop album On The Six, produced by legendary producer and songwriter Rodney Jerkins, aka Dark Child. The chorus of the track is sung by low-profile singers Shania Harrell, Jennifer Carr, and they made sure their voices merged with Jenny's so that it would sound more like background vocals and, well, I guess you could say it worked. On the 6th, left its print on the music industry, but before jumping into the 2000s, here are some notable mentions worth mentioning due to uncredited or unknown background vocals. the lead of her first album, Jennifer's second body of work, J-Lo, was released on January 16th of 2001 under Epic Records and would be her official transition into a sex symbol. It featured the singles Love Don't Cost a Thing, Play, I'm Real, and Ain't It Funny. It was reported that Love Don't Cost a Thing was based around her relationship with Sean Diddy Combs at the time, whom would allegedly shower Jennifer with expensive gifts, contradicting the message of her song. This would later result in speculations about the split. Described as forthy pop and catchy by critics, it was a radio hit deemed Classic Lopez and topped the American Hot 100 airplay chart. Question of the hour is, who is that singing all up and through the background? Although uncredited, Canela Cox, who's also toured with Lopez a select few times as a backing vocalist is said to be the voice behind the voice. Successor of her first record, Play, was released on March 20th, and several writers are credited for the song. One of them being young Christina Millen, whose vocals can be heard throughout the course of the track and more profoundly in the chorus, where Lopez doesn't sing at all. It is noted that Christina is credited for her background vocals, but with the amount of weight on her back from carrying a large portion of the song. 
fans have stated that a cameo or feature would have sufficed. Play attracted moderate commercial success and peaked at number 18 on the Hot 100. In spite of JLo still being on top of her A-game, sales started declining. CEO of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola, was now working with Lopez at an attempt to keep her A-list status, decided to steer her towards a more urban audience, noticing that hip-hop and R&B were growing in popularity. Another industry-known songwriter, Shalene Thomas, was used regularly as a main backup vocalist for Jennifer and would sing the hooks and chorus on majority of the songs on the album. I, all I want, all I ever need, all I want. The plot thickens when we would later get out that Maria Carey was also in a contract with Columbia, which was at the time owned by Sonny. This contract would force her to work with Tommy Mottola, also known as her abusive ex-husband. Maria and Tommy were married from 1993 to 1998, and it was publicly known that things did not end on a good note. In Maria's memoir, The Meaning of Maria Carey, released back in 2020, she dropped some gems and her fans were right there to pick them up. The book gives readers an insight about her troubled marriage, the ins and outs of her career, and the feud between her and Jennifer, never name-dropping but instead referring to Jennifer as someone I don't know and whom I don't know throughout the book. Which, if you didn't know, is a reference itself to an iconic interview Maria did where she was asked about J.Lo in which she responded with, I don't know her. The tea is exceptionally good today. In it, Maria states that Tommy did all he could to sabotage her career. She said, Tommy was furious when I cut the strings he used to manipulate me. There was no way he would allow me to have a huge success after leaving him and Sonny. He was not going to let me or Glitter shine. She goes on to say, After hearing my new song using the same sample I used, Sonny rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on her label, whom I don't know. Carrie was referencing Lopez's new song, I Am Real and her song Lover Boy off of her 8th studio album as well as from the soundtrack to a movie she was filming at the time, Glitter. Glitter was released by Sony Pictures, a sister company of Sony Music, which allegedly gave Tommy access to secretly view footage of the movie while the film was still in production. Maria decided to sample a song by the group Yellow Magic Orchestra called Firecracker to be used in Lover Boy. Jennifer released her original version of I'm Real on June 19, 2001, three months before Maria's Lover Boy and in the song, not to our surprise, it's alleged that Shalene Thomas once again can be heard singing the chorus. You also hear a sample of Firecracker being used, but according to the writer of the song himself, Martin Denny, Carrie was the first artist to sample that exact composition of the song, and the music publisher of Firecracker has come out and said that Maria called them to license a sample of the song first, and within a month, Jennifer did the same. Tommy, being the CEO of Sony, allowed him to receive exclusive details about the artist under the company which allowed him to make sure Jennifer's song would be released before Maria's. After finding out Maria and Murder Incorporated, artist Ja Rule collaborated for Carrie's song If We, also on the Glitter soundtrack. Tommy made some phone calls to Murder Incorporated CEO Irv Gotti in order to sidetrack Maria. In an interview with XXL magazine, Gotti claimed that once Tommy heard Maria's song and knew Glitter was months away from completion, he took the sample and idea and gave it to Lopez to use it in her song I'm Real, both the original and real remixed virgin. In 2017 interview with YouTubers Desus and Miro, Earth told them that he, referring to Tommy, called him because he found out that him and Ja Rule and Ja Rule made a record with Maria and at the time Motola hated her. So he pushed Jennifer Lopez to compete. In regards to the phone call, Gotti states that Motola told him, I needed to make a record with J-Lo, but I want you to put Ja Rule on it and make it a duetty kinda record.
It was exactly the same style with Maria and Ja talking back and forth, just the way he does with Jennifer on I'm Real. The remix version was co-written by Murder Incorporated artist Ashanti, who also demoed the track and her vocals were used for the official release. The Glitter soundtrack wouldn't be released till weeks after the supposed worldwide release date of September 11th, 2001, due to Maria being hospitalized for extreme exhaustion, mental, and physical breakdowns. Maria wraps up this segment of her book with, and after that shit, Loverboy ended up being the best-selling single of 2001 in the United States, I Am Real. The fourth single from J.Lo, Ain't It Funny, would also be remixed by Murder Incorporated for her remix album, Jato the L.O., and similar to I'm Real, was marketed as a remix of the alt version of Ain't It Funny, where Shaleen Thomas is heard yet again singing the hook. For those of you who are confused, basically two different songs, same title. The remix was again co-written and demoed by Ashanti. Jennifer would yet again pretend to be singing over Ashanti's vocals. Jenny from the block would lead her third studio album, This Is Me Then, and was faced with mixed reviews. But despite all odds, reached number on the Billboard Hot 200, Natasha Ramos was an up-and-coming singer at the time and started working with Andre Deo, who co-wrote Jenny from the block and had Natasha Natasha sing the demo version. Her vocals can be heard loud and clear during the hook. Jennifer loved her demo and had Natasha record background vocals for other songs on her album. In fact, J.Lo loved her voice so much that she decided to allow Ramos to sing the hooks on the following songs. Controversy would soon follow the Latin diva to her fourth album Rebirth when label mate artist Amory recorded her 2005 hit single One Thing. Amory wanted desperately to release it, but her label would reject it time and time again, deeming it non-hit worthy. J Lo decided that she wanted to use the song for her own album. Upon hearing this, Amory and producer Rich Harrison leaked the song to radio stations, and before Columbia could get the song removed, One Thing had already gained popularity. Pulling a few strings, Rich Harrison offered Jennifer a song now known as the memorable bop Get Right after she told him that she'd like something similar to Emery's. The song had originally been made for recording artist Usher. Needless to say, he wasn't happy about this and demanded royalties and writing credits. You can hear Natasha Ramos throughout the chorus. A song written and recorded by Moesha, star Brandy titled Ride or Die, was supposed to go on her own album Aphrodisiac, but didn't quite make the cut. The track was then given to Lopez, who didn't feel the need to record her own vocals for whatever reason that may be, and Brandy's already recorded vocals were used. Around the time her fifth album came about, things seemed to take a turn for the better. Not only was Jennifer singing the majority of her own songs, she also began giving credit to all parties involved, including background vocalists. Her era of ghostwriting would come to a hiatus with the release of her latest album, AKA. From what we know via our own research, no ghost singing has been detected on the album. Fans from all over argue that Jennifer is innocent and is just a girl from the Bronx with a dream that if anyone were to be blamed, it should be Sony. Counter arguments say that Jennifer is another Millie Vanilli and shouldn't have such longevity in the music industry, and that if this were anyone else, they'd be cancelled. Whichever side you're on doesn't take away the fact that our girl J Lo has become a household name and had made quite the impression, especially on the Latin music scene. <laughs> So, which side are you on? Let us know in the comment section down below and stay tuned to see which celebrity vault we're entering next. I don't know him. Does she seem cool? 
I don't know 